But given that there's been so much population shift out of rural Texas, uh, you would have thought all the rural members would be facing really tough redistricting challenges. And in fact, they don't seem to have had that difficult a time avoiding cannibalizing each other. And the, the greater pain seems to be in the urban areas because of that shift to suburban. I, I frankly think that's, that's an unwritten story about this oh, process it's, it's, that, it's, that it's is fascinating. surprising. It's fascinating, but what helps out in West Texas is uh, Warren Chisholm announced that he's announced not coming he's back. Leaving. That's true. That actually helps because that, that seat is actually a paired seat that really won't be because Warren's not coming back. So I mean, right. you can look at the individual seats and have the discussion, which is a fascinating one to look at. Look at the map and look at the population trends. There is a depopulation of rural Texas, no doubt about it. But what we saw, I don't, I don't think we expected to see was a huge depopulation of urban inner city. They, yeah. went, to, they went to the suburbs. And, and look at the map. I don't know if you've seen there. There's one that was color coded for growth and movement. It's a fascinating map to look at because all the hot spots are around, around the urban areas. And even the urban areas and the rural areas, you know, share the same color of a, of a depopulation. And so it starts this domino effect, right? All the districts working together, starting in East Texas, uh, all the districts working together have this huge domino effect working its way across Texas. And it's, it's phenomenal to watch because it's very hard to draw one, two, or three districts that don't turn into, you know, uh, uh, a huge effect across. So, and and, and I, we should say, to clarify, you don't have to have lost population to lose representation. If you've grown but grown less than the rest of the state, you lose representation. Travis County has grown incredibly fast over the last decade, but only consistent with the state average growth. Right. So right. we didn't gain any new representation. Uh, so it's, it's, it's been surprising yeah. what the growth dynamics have done to the shift in power geographically. Dallas County losing maybe two That's districts, right. That's right. two I districts. find pretty remarkable. Yeah. Uh, Harris County losing one, but arguably they should be, I've heard it argued that they should be losing two. You know, I, th these are things that uh, affect the power in the legislature in a way that doesn't affect partisan balance, but that does affect sort of how we make policy. because. You know, it's been very, uh, policy has been profoundly affected by the number of rural legislators in the Texas House for a long time. And now the shift is so much towards suburban right. representation. I think it's pr frankly going to create a stronger uh, uh, mandate for public education in the future legislatures because those are folks who are moving into the suburbs in order to get into suburban school districts and they're going to be champions for public education. They're going to force their re elected representatives to be champions for public education. I, I think it, it will probably have some other policy consequences that are hard to anticipate at this point. Yeah, but. and another thing too, you look at Williamson County, the, the growth was, was so much that it used to be Williamson and Milam shared, so two counties, two state reps. There is enough population in Williamson, Williamson County now for 2.6 seats. I mean, so you're seeing this huge shift now where you're going to have, you know, Williamson County having, you know, almost three state reps coming from Williamson County. But that's the shift that we talked about coming into the suburbs. Williamson County, uh, Montgomery County uh, are great examples of how that shift has gone to the suburbs. Yeah. And it's, it's I, well, quite frankly, I think it's fascinating to look at um, where, where I live. People come in from all over the world, all over the country to take these wonderful job opportunities, educational opportunities. The demographics of where I live has shifted tremendously as far as age population, um, ethnic racial makeup. I mean, Round Rock, Texas right now and, and some of the Austin areas of, of Williamson County look dramatically different than they did 10, 15, 20 years ago. Uh, and I think that's phenomenal to watch. Uh, I love that that's the case. Williamson County is, is, is not a county that uh, has to look at um, some of the uh, minority areas, racial minority areas, uh, our, our minority population is so well dispersed all over the county. I think that's a fantastic thing. You don't have a pocket here and a pocket here that you have to consider when you're doing the Department of Justice lines. Our minority population is everywhere. I think that's a fantastic testament to the successes of not only the, that population, but to the cities. I think it's fantastic to know that Williamson County, that's not a variable we have to look at a whole lot, simply because our minority population is, is uh, very well dispersed.